Hello and welcome to a new tutorial series where I'll be teaching you about Shell and Shell Script. Now what Shell is, is that it's a way on Unix systems that you can perform commands and other stuff on basically the same level as your operating system. So your operating system also runs on these commands. So it's not like a programming language since it's more um, scripting and a command line interpreter. So it's a lot different from something like, say, Java or C or C++, since it's a lot more, um, uh, I want to say, primitive. But it has several, since it's able to interface with your operating system, it has several abilities which you'll probably find invaluable as you know get to learn it. Now, before I actually start with teaching you Shell, Shell is, well, the Shell we'll be using is only available you can only really use it easily that's you know pre-installed on Unix systems which is an operating system so right now I'm using Mac Mac, uh, Mac OS X which is a Unix system Linux is also Unix and basically every operating system except every you know used operating system is Unix based except for Windows so if you're a Windows user and you don't feel like getting an emulator or another partition or something along those lines then you probably don't want to watch this video unless of course you still want to learn which is always nice but you won't be able to use it very you won't be able to use it easily because Windows runs off of command prompt and batch scripts which I might make a tutorial for later but um, compared to shell it pretty much sucks so to get on with it um, if you're on a Mac uh, Linux is similar you it'll probably be in you know uh, your taskbar or a drop down menu uh, in order to get to it'll probably be called command line, command line interpreter or terminal on Mac it's called terminal so in your applications folder there'll be another folder called utilities which I just keep on my dock and inside utilities is terminal so you can just click on it and open terminal you'll be greeted with this lovely GUI I, you know, I changed my colors just so you know it's easier to read and work on without it hurting my eyes when I'm staring at it for hours at a time but I digress. So shell, there are several different types of shell scripts. Um, shell is, is normally abbreviated SH and that'll be the file extension we'll be using. It stands for shell or born shell, not born like B-O-R-N, but B-O-U-R-N-E, which is the last name of the person who made um, born shell in like the late 70s. There are also several type, other sh types of shell like C shell, which is C-S-H, corn shell, which is K-S-H, and then born again shell which is BASH or bash which is what we'll primarily be using so it's similar to born shell except it's made to combine you know C shell and corn shell and born shell so it's very useful and we, that's why that's the main one we'll be using so first again it's all about you know interfacing with the operating system so right now, and it has several built-in commands, so if we do PWD, it'll print out that. PWD stands for Print Working Directory. Your working directory is the current directory you're in. So you're, uh, when you see this first line, this is the name of your machine, this is your current directory, and this is the name of the user on the machine. So what tilde is, is your home directory. So my home directory is, is called, is, has the same name as my username, Scott Fasoni. So right now I'm in forward slash users forward slash Scott Fasoni. When the so this is a file this is a path a file path that you know that's operating systems work on folders and file paths and paths. So when you see a slash at the beginning of it, that first slash means root. So that means there is nothing on top of this first slash. That is the root of the computer. Everything inside of the computer is in the root directory. So inside the root directory there's a users folder and then another forward slash to indicate that you're going inside the users folder and then the folder Scott Fasoni which is the current folder I'm in. So this will just print the current directory you're in, the top level one. And if you do print working directory again it'll print your current working directory. So the reason why it has tilde or tilde right now is that tilde is a shortcut for your um, your home on the file system. Yeah, it's a it tried to interpret it as a command, but tilde is just your um, 
your working directory, your normal directory, your home directory is what it is. So how you can change what directory you're in right now is called CD. This stands for change directory. So there are several things you do. So if I want to go inside, I can go into uh, desktop. And if you start typing something like DE at desk, you can press tab and it'll complete it for you. So sometimes you have to type a certain amount of characters. If there's like if there were several files starting with DES, like if I press D and try to press tab, it'll make that annoying sound because again, there are several uh, directories in there that start with D. But if I do DES, it knows it's desktop and I can press enter. So right now, my current my the current directory I'm in is desktop and if I do print working directory again, It'll say I'm in root, then users, then Scott Sony, then desktop. As you can see, there are you know a good amount of files and folders on my desktop. Well, there aren't because I cleaned it up a while ago. I used to keep everything on my desktop, but then I changed it and put it all in documents. But that's besides the point, isn't it? So with change directory, so if I wanted to go inside another one, we can go inside GoPro Temp, where I put all my files from my GoPro until I utilize them and say that. So if you want to know, so right now, without opening GoPro Temp, because some people on Linux system, well, some people on other operating systems don't even have um, a GUI or a graphical user interface. They don't have a desktop. They don't have a dock. They don't have taskbars. They don't have Windows. They Their entire computer is just this, which, of course, is completely, you know, doesn't make sense since, you know, you won't be watching this video unless you have a uh, something with a GUI. But let's say we don't want to just double click on this because that'd be too easy. How do we figure out what's inside of it? Well, there just happens to be another um, un uh, shell command, which is ls, which basically stands for list. So if we just press enter, it'll list everything in this directory. So this, if it doesn't have a file extension, we can assume that it's a directory. So they say there's bike, there's a fire start, magnets, pit, underwater, there's a fire, I mean a file, sorry, and another file, and these are obviously mp4 files, and then other folders. Now this just gives you the name, this doesn't actually tell you, like, bike could be a file, but without a file extension. So with certain commands, with um, most commands, you can add options, which are different from arguments for the command, and options normally begin with a hyphen or a dash. So for ls, there's dash l and along with and this obviously provides a lot more information this shows us the file name is all the way on the right and then there's a date i mean there's a time there's a date and there's a time i believe that is either created or last modified i'm just going to guess created cuz i forget there's also permissions if it says d at the beginning that means it's a directory so that means bike is a directory and familyjump.mp4 is not a directory. The following nine characters are permissions for it. So the first, so R is read, W is write, and X is execute. So the first three is user, is your current user, and then your current group, and then something else I forget. Doesn't matter. Maybe guessed. So I can read, write, and execute this right now. But if we go over to this other movie, I can only read and write and since there's a dash word that is that means I can't execute but it makes sense because I don't want to execute a video file and if you and just to clear this up since I like a clear terminal you can also push clear and what that does is just uh, moves everything down like if you scroll up which you can't do if you don't have a GUI but if you scroll up you can still see everything but if you scroll all the way down it looks nice and neat so if you ever want to know anything more about a command, such as the plethora of options available, there are two or three ways. You can do help, ls, and sometimes that doesn't work. But what should almost always work is man, which stands for manual. Man ls. It basically has a nice, you know, built-in system. You can use down arrow to go down, up arrow to go up, and it'll tell you ls, list directory contents, and it a whole bunch of stuff. It gives a short description of the command and all the different options that are available. Blah, 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 blah. If we scroll down to what we were using, which was dash L, 
we can say the lowercase letter oh yeah list in long format see below if the output is to a terminal a total sum for all the file sizes is output on the line before the long listing so for example it says see below in order so we can see the entire specification of the option we used to show it and in fact you know manual pages can be you know really long since they're supposed to give you all the information you would ever need to know about that specific command so you know there's a lot of information here don't feel like reading it and again now in order to um, leave in order to exit this because if we scroll all the way to the end which is a long way since you know ls is a very fundamental command which is used so it requires a lot of documentation in order to tell everything about it but if we try to scroll all the way to the bottom it says end if i keep pressing down it makes bad noises so in order to exit a man page you press q and it brings you back to where you were so all we've done so far is been able to you know change directory and well print working directory so right now you can see the current directory I'm in and so we can go into directories we can list what's in those directories and we can print our current working directory and we can man we can look up different commands so for example if I wanted to go down even more we can go into bike and we can print my working directory and see this long list of files that I'm in but how do I go up well unbeknownst to some people there are several hidden files and then like really hidden files for m on my Mac system I enable hidden files so I can see them for example down here on my desktop you can see .ds store that is normally a hidden file and on Mac it goes into every single folder you open and it contains information about what icon each uh, folder or file in that um, in that uh, directory uses I really don't like seeing this here but I like when I open Finder, I can see all the hidden files. But then there's really hidden files. Specifically, there are two files on my desktop that you and I can't see. But, if and they're in every directory, in fact. So if we do list again, but we do dash A, this shows us, exa this shows us everything in the current directory. So these, if we press just ls, we clear real quick, ls, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight files. You know, two rows, four columns. But if we do LSA, uh, suddenly there's a lot more. There's the same eight, but then there's three more. There's the dot DS store that's hidden, but there's also dot and dot dot, which is curious enough that, you know, they don't even have file names. But this is fundamental in every operating system uses this. So even if you're on a Windows, every directory have the has these two hidden files and windows has a different file for uh, organizing stuff in the directory besides ds store but these two files are very important these two files are what mac calls aliases and what windows calls shortcuts and i forget what linux calls them it's maybe one of those two but basically if you try to go change directory into one of these it redirects you specifically the dot in every single directory references this own directory. So if we try to change directory into dot, it won't change our directory since dot just redirects into bike. Well, the dot inside of bike redirects to bike. But dot dot is very important because dot dot redirects you into the directory currently above you. So if we print our current work directory, right now GoPro temp is above us. So if we do cd dot dot, now we're in GoPro temp. So if we want to go back to desktop, we can do cd dot dot. If we want to go back to the user file, cd dot dot. And then if we print our current working directory, we can still go higher. So we can do cd dot dot. And now we're in users, cd dot dot. Well, now we're in slash or root. So if we try cd dot dot again, there is no dot dot. In fact, if we list file, if we list files here, there aren't many visible files. You know, applications, library, network, system blah 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 but if we do LSA which will list all hidden files suddenly there's a lot more but since we're in root this dot dot right here obviously it can't reference anything higher because if we do CD dot dot we're still in root print working directory and just one slash we're in root but again we can list files in here we can see you know all these files 
And of course, there's a lot of hidden ones, which I like seeing in the GUI. So, if we want a quick and easy way of getting back home, we can just cd tilde, which, as I said before, tilde is your home directory. So now we're in tilde, and if we print our working directory, we're back in root users Scott Fasoni, which is my home directory. We can list files, several things, and we can list even hidden files, which there's a lot. And if we wanted to really clutter the console, we can list uh, with options um, next to a dash. You can actually specify multiple options, so we can list hidden files and list them the long way, which, as you can see, is a lot. Which imagine if you couldn't, if you didn't have a terminal GUI, you wouldn't be able to scroll up. So there'd be a lot of information there that you could not actually read. But we'll get more into handling that in the next episode. But until then, this has been, you know, an introduction to um, basic shell scripts. You know, we learn print working directory, uh, change directory, and listing files, you know, with, you know, certain uh, options. So we can see, you know, all the permissions, the owner of the file, uh, the group of the owner of the file, and you know, the file name, date created or modified, I forget. I, I believe now this is the size of the file and so on. But, okay, again, <laughs> uh, next episode, we'll probably get into actually um, manipulating files and um, obviously get into a lot more of the commands available. So until then, I'm Borella Born, and have fun. <laughs>